Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. We are now Pokemon League Champions, and you know what that means? Some of you younger folk might not know what that means. Tons of things that have now been unlocked, and you don't even have to pay extra money for it! Mode selection keys can now be transmitted with Unova Link's key system. We unlocked easy mode before, and I gotta say, I have strong feelings about this. They added a difficulty mode in Black 2 and White 2, and I think it sucks. Some people were questioning why, if there was an easy mode and a hard mode, why I wasn't playing on hard mode to make the series more interesting. It's because I don't think it makes the game more interesting. Everyone's all like, oh, Pokemon needs a hard mode. Why doesn't Pokemon have a hard mode? They need to add a hard mode and a super hard mode and an ultra hard mode and an ultra mega super duper hard mode. And I don't agree. Pokemon games were never meant to be literally Dark Souls. It's not that. And besides, your hard mode, use Spinda and Love Disk. Just use worse Pokemon. <laughs> so first of all, we can send and receive keys with the infrared communication or DS wireless communication. White 2 gets easy mode, black 2 gets hard mode, but you can unlock it for the other version by using this feature with other people. In easy mode, all enemies have their levels lowered, but in return give 80% the prize money that they would give in normal mode. Challenge mode, on the other hand, raises the gym leaders and other bosses' levels, gives them better IVs than what they would have in normal mode, you get 1.2 times the amount of prize money, then the bosses get an extra team member, usually with some kind of good held item at the end of their team. I chose not to play challenge mode due to how inaccessible this is. You need two copies of the game, and one of them has to be black too, and it has to have finished the game, and you need to have two systems to play and transfer them with. That's hundreds of dollars and... How long to be... 34 and a half hours of your time! Just to start playing the game. So with all of this, I'm gonna say that challenge mode and easy mode are strange, and not just because of how you unlock them. While the enemies have their levels modified, their stats are not modified, and they are the same that they would be anyway in normal mode. The IVs that are changed for the gym leaders are the only things that are different about their core stats. The IVs are applied to what their normal mode stats are and not to the higher level that they're displayed with. Early on with Berg here, yes, he is significantly tougher in challenge mode. But let's move on to Elisa who has 12 IVs in her stats and that's pretty typical for a gym leader. And IVs are how many more points you will have in the stat when you're level 100. When dividing that by those levels, it's what, like two or three extra points in a stat and it's really not going to come up that much. And eventually, this increased difficulty falls off completely because in the late game, basically every important battle has good IVs to begin with and you're going to see maybe plus one to their stats if even that much. The only thing these different levels affect is experience points and remember, they scale in this game. This means that challenge mode gives more experience points every battle. You have to put up with the bosses having better IVs and health items, of course, but if you're fighting a lot of battles, that means that you're gonna be keeping up with these high levels pretty easily, and you really do have the stats that you would have at those levels. At high level play, and when you know what the differences truly are, some players have argued that challenge mode is actually easier. Don't get me wrong, if you're doing a speed run, it's a lot harder because you have to deal with an extra Pokemon at the end of the team that you have to strategize for. But if you're playing normally, I could see an argument being made that challenge mode is easier. Easy mode lowers the levels without lowering the stats, but it gives the same EXP as normal mode. Note that I said that this stuff is programmed strangely, not incorrectly. If they didn't make it so that easy mode gave the same amount of experience as normal mode, easy would have been harder than normal due to being identical fights with less EXP awarded. I think that it rounds out to easy mode being practically identical in challenge to normal mode, except you get less money for winning, and Pokemon with moves like Night Slash or Seismic Toss hurt you less. It is easier, but not by much, and I wouldn't give up 20% of my prize money to do it. Sorry if that was a little long. There was a lot to cover, and I had a lot to say about these difficulty modes. But now we can move on to the greener pastures. Things get a lot more positive from here on out. Welcome home. Mom, you're not gonna end up being a detective in disguise, are you? Welcome home, Blaze. Hmm, I barely recognized you, even though you just saw me last night when I came home and I've been in my bedroom this whole time. It seems like you've seen, a, you've seen and thought about a lot and grown into an adult. Oh, seems we're about to have a visitor. 
You know who it is! Cedric Juniper. Oh, so you're Blaze. My name's Juniper. The one who gave you your Pokedex is my daughter. It's been a long time, Professor Juniper. How well, has it been that long? I can't remember. Well, that's not really why I came. Blaze, to commemorate entering the Hall of Fame, I'm about to upgrade your Pokedex. I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what I upgraded, so why don't you ask? Well, actually, it's really simple. I made it so you can register all of the National Pokedex Pokemon. Wow, that's amazing! That must be why you and your daughter are Pokemon professors. <laughs> Flattery won't get you anywhere. Well then, I think I'll be taking my leave. Listen up, there are still many, many Pokemon in this world. Some Pokemon attack each other for food. Some other, some help one another. They protect each other's places. I'd be happy to think, I'd be happy if you think of, about things like that while looking at the Pokedex. Thinking about how Pokemon are edible. That makes it really depressing to collect these things. Oh, that's right, Blaze, I have a present for you too. Last thing with shoes, this thing puts a sip in my step. No matter what you do, your time is yours and your Pokemon's alone. So, decide what you want to do for yourself and do it. I enjoy my own time in my own way too. We're gonna step outside. Hey, my sis has something she wants to tell you. Um, Blaze, my purloin. It evolved. But thank you very much for finding it. There's more, right? Um, Blaze? These days, I've been having dreams about a Pokemon. A Pokemon called Zoroark. It was calling your name, Blaze. I don't really get it, but I hear that Zoroark from her dreams is on Victory Road. That's what she wanted to say. Be seeing ya. Oh, almost forgot. Congrats on becoming the champion. I called it, you got good instincts. That you did. Best post game ever is what we're stepping into. Better than Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Better than Platinum. We're gonna start out with the only thing that sucks. You notice how as I'm going through my Pokemon status screens, there's no page for any sort of ribbon. The Unova League is the only league in the world of Pokemon to not award ribbons to its victors. Damn corporate America being so cheap to its citizens. Perhaps it was something missed early in development, and it could be rectified in a remake? Nah, they're just gonna pretend none of the old mistakes need fixing and call it a faithful remake, let's be real. Moving on from our Pokémon, we got us to talk about next. Our trainer card is now a brand new color. This is upgraded upon entering the Hall of Fame. Several trainer card upgrades exist, and we'll be going over all of them. But we will not be getting all of them! What, do you think I'm made of time? Ain't Dialga. We'll give Typhoon up a little ring, even though we could just walk over and talk to him. I'm lazy. I'd like to spend time thinking about how to raise my Pokemon and make him stronger. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. The menu's being inconsistent. Something up. I'm an Indelitan. If you're bored, come hang out. He'll give you hints on various things that you have not yet done in the post game, so we know about a Zoroark and Victory Road, and we know about him hanging out in Indelitan. Many different things have opened up to us all at the same time, and there's even a story of its own going on here that we're going to be tackling. If we were to call Bianca now... We can now ask her to please look at effort. What's your little darling's efforts do you want me to see? Pignotti! You're Pignotti. It seems like it can work a little harder. You're Lasagna. It seems like it can work a little harder. You're Aiden, it has worked really hard. Yes, it has. Is Aiden our only, Aiden is our only fully EV trained Pokemon. So she'll tell you if a Pokemon has maxed out effort values or not. Usually there's somebody who just does this in some town somewhere, but you got it right in your pocket whenever you want. Bianca's nice and convenient. If a Pokemon has fully maxed out its effort values in a given stat, she will tell you which two stats it is to know that your EV spread has worked. It's a super nice, super convenient feature and I wanted you to be aware of that. That's all of Aspertia. First off, a Pokemon outbreak on Route 3. 
Every single day of real time, that data is not accurate, by the way. <laughs> Every single day of real time, there will be a different swarm on each route in the Unova region, allowing you to get various Pokemon from other regions. I want to tell you, I will not be doing bios for these. They're just super unreliable to obtain. Wait, 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 wait. That's talking about us. Crustal and Embor. It was talking about our team entering the Hall of Fame. That was cool. Uh, yeah, so you want to check the marquee to see what you can do. It'll also give you hints on various things that you have not done yet. Um, I just don't really think it's that important for me to go over them. You're so unlikely to get the Pokemon that you want from this anyway that I'm gonna just opt for brief overviews and tell you about Pokemon that are really good. In fact, that's going to be the structure of this post game. We'll be kind of just keeping the focus on the Pokemon that are good and not giving bios to every single little thing that wouldn't be helpful to you anyway. Speaking of which, on Route 19, you get absolutely nothing. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to go here. And I'm gonna warn you, the post game's difficulty ramps up rather quickly. Don't underestimate it. Oh, you've come. I could spar with you, the strongest trainer in the Unova region. I didn't think it was you we were fighting. Uh, okay. Uh, hang on a second. I gotta make sure I'm ready for this. Giving Jade back the metronome, taking away that experience share. And now I think we're ready. He's so intense, the wind blew indoors. My heart jumps for joy. Well then, prepare yourself for battle. Kiai! Everyone's saying Kiai lately. Use the regular trainer battle theme, dude. Bro, do you even lift? There's falling off and then there's this. Your old trainer, your old battle theme was amazing. I feel like all I do these days is narrate movesets. Excelgore starts off the fight at level 60. Bug type, sticky hole for its ability. So, won't be able to get rid of that health item that it doesn't have. With the moves, Focus Blast, Acid Spray, Giga Drain, and Bug Buzz. I don't know what Acid Spray does off the top of my head. I assume that it's some special poisoning move that could probably also poison, because that's generally how it works. Excelgore is really freaking fast, and I'm slightly worried that we're not going to be able to outspeed it here with Lasagna. We'll try, though. We'll try. No! It wasn't enough! Excelgore's base speed's, I think, 140. It's nuts how fast this thing is. Oh, well. I was hoping to maybe get a little bit lucky, but uh, we're just definitely taking the first loss on this one. You've got little that you can do to pick Naughty, so you get out there. Old tried and true, buddy. Though I'm pretty sure with that, I know who you're gonna send out next. Heat Crash! Pretty sure we're doing fine. Excelgore makes an excellent lead to a team. I've used one before and I like it a lot. Excelgore is one of those Pokemon that if you try to describe it to somebody, they, they'll never get it. I remember that somebody was trying to tell me like, yeah, that ninja thing with the pink head. And I'm like, what the frick are you talking about? You must be misinterpreting its spray. You didn't send out what I thought you were gonna send out. He went for Bufalon, level 60, normal type, reckless for its ability. Wild Charge, Earthquake, Mega Horn, and Head Charge. Bufalon was another popular guess for who I was gonna be using as a team member, and I can definitely see why. He's a great Pokemon, and I like him a lot. Well, the recoil damage is gonna beat ya. Down, they're both down. I don't know who you're gonna pick. Um, hmm. When in doubt, Harmony out. Thank you. You'll probably have something type effective against everything he could have. No, you have Heat Wave, you have Heat Wave, it's fine. Escavalier is level 60, Bug Steel type with Shell Armor and x -Azor. Swords Dance, Iron Head, Reversal. Hardly mattered, we had a quad effective move, his stats were no match for us. I was hoping to maybe get a sweep going with, um, with Crustle, where it would just miss, where, um, Excelgore would miss the Focus Blast or something like that, and I could just kind of go ham on it. Conkelder is fighting type with the ability Guts, and it's got Stone Edge, Super Power, Earthquake, and Poison Jab. Once again, ah, Harmony. I feel so bad for you because, well now I feel extra bad for you. I was gonna say because I could see you just kind of feeling like you aren't enough because of everything going on. We'll go Jade right here. Poor Lasagna. I think that's the first time that Lasagna ever meant nothing in a battle that I used him in and he's been excellent just so consistently all the time. Alder's got full restores, you love him, you gotta love him, I love him too. 
that's just fine. I've gone for the Dragon Claws. It's a nice neutral move, and it just so happens that I can't do a lot of damage to you. This needs to get better. This really needs to get freaking better. You guys, you're league champions, man. I know that we're fighting a former champion, which is really cool in and of itself, though, but man, we're just gonna go for Dragon Claw three times. We've activated the Metronome. I'm wanting to say that it goes up by 1.2 times additively, so we'd be at 1.6 right now. I don't know the exact calculations on it, I just know that I've used it in speedrunning, and it's pretty cool there. Braviary has the ability Keen Eye and has Crush Claw, Superpower, Rock Slide, and Aerial Ace. Nothing that I particularly fear aside from just a really beefy superpower. So I think we're okay. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. I outspeed you. You're not gonna get a random flinch on me. Make up for not participating in the champion battle by beating a former champion. There's level 58 for us. Pretty sure we're done learning any level up moves in all of our Pokemon. His star player, Volcarona, is level 62. And we've got to contend with a Citrus Berry, the ability Flame Body, and the moves Quiver Dance, Silver Wind, Heat Wave, and Psychic. These things are dangerous. Psychic is probably about the. <laughs> You wanted to show him what for! Thanks, girl. That's the champion for you. I could say the same. That's the former champion for you. Gramps. I did it. I did it. I did it. The White Tree Hollow. I, I, I made it to the deepest part. <laughs> Why, if it isn't Benga. Are you serious, boy? Hey. Gramps, <laughs> you know how strong I am. Hey, hey. Who's that? Her name is Blaze. She's the strongest trainer in the Unova region. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that trainer smells tough. How about it, Benga? Do you want to spar, perhaps? No. I know that trainer's strong, <laughs> and I want to battle. But those Pokemon haven't been through enough. Me and my Pokemon. We made it through the deepest part of the White Tree Hollow. You do that too. Then we'll see who's stronger. <laughs> Let's try hard to be the best. <laughs> Later, Blazing Gramps. He's a lively one, even for my grandson. You're what? I'll explain what he was talking about. He challenged a place called the White Tree Hollow, which appeared in White Forest. You'll find out what kind of place it is if you go there. An ordinary trainer, however, can't make it to where he is. So that's the story. If you'd like, you should take the challenge as well. We're up to three freaking objectives and battled the former champion. I'd like to talk about Alder a little bit in a bit of greater detail. So, um, he is always depicted as having more than six Pokemon in basically all of his appearances. If you look on his clothes, you have medals! I got 23 hint medals. Uh, can those count as medals, please? I want the next milestone, and it's hard. According to, as I was saying, according to Yusuke Omora, a designer on this game, it's because Alder doesn't know how to use a PC so he can carry around as many Pokemon as he wants. So why did anyone ever tell me how to use a PC? Checking out our hint medals, catch 50 Pokemon in one day, find all the hidden grottos, hatch an egg, leave Pokemon at the daycare, cross all the bridges, subway bosses, Battle Institute, one million experience points in one day. Save battle points, win tournaments at the points. Jeez, uh, this stuff is nuts. Def enter the Hall of Fame with only normal type Pokemon. Enter the Hall of Fame with one Pokemon. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with now. These challenges are intense. So I'm gonna tell you another objective that we're going to have going forward because yeah, there's even more. Our grand goal, I would say, is to get our Pokedex evaluated and have it completely filled in. We don't need to catch all these Pokemon. Like I've said, completion is based on Pokemon seen a la Sinnoh. According to our trainer card that we saw just a few moments ago, we're at 275 out of the possible 300. I've been telling you all about the Pokemon that I think could be a problem, and I'll continue to do so as we go onward. Too bad, Aiden, you gotta learn Waterfall one more time. Consider it character balancing. For on the other end of there was the Cave of Being, a place that we could do nothing with before. 
You? Why, if it isn't Blaze? Yeah, just you and me, all alone. You're smart and wonderful. That's something- that's someone with a Pokedex for you, noticing a place like this. Still, the space. It's hard to put into words, but it feels full of something. A mysterious presence can be felt. I just thought my repel were off. <laughs> Yuxi! Mesprit! And Azelf! Yuxi went flying off somewhere. Mesprit went flying off somewhere. Azelf went flying off somewhere. Those three are Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azelf. They're thought to be the Pokemon that gave us knowledge, emotion, and willpower. Still, I wonder where those three went. Hey, Blaze. Look all over the Unova region and try to find him. The world's most intense game of hide and seek, besides perplexity, is about to begin. They're hiding around the Unova region. We gotta find them. It's Battle of the Subplots. We're at like five different things that we could go and do in any order that we would like. There's no there's nothing in Flockacy Ranch, and the way that I wrote this in my notes was absolutely nothing. Double D, which I can only he which I hear in Ed's voice, knowing exactly what I was referencing months ago when I wrote. This. <laughs> it's so stupid. The trend continues in Verbank City and Verbank Complex. There's nothing new there to do at all, except for Pokestar Studios, which there's a lot of things to do there. By entering the Hall of Fame, we've unlocked several new movies. But if you can believe it, that is not the trigger for unlocking all of the movies. There's more still that we have to do to be able to do that, so Pokestar Studios is being saved for a later day. We can take the boat to fly to the mainland, or we could withdraw a flying Pokemon. What is this? By withdrawing a flying Pokemon? Congratulations! Wallpapers were added to commemorate your victory against the champion. Man, I hate getting pop-up ads. Our PC box wallpaper. We have the special tab. We have monochrome. Black and white, took me a second. Team Plasma. Movies. Put. This could be a good wallpaper for a competitive tab or something like that. Off we go to the mainland. Ready to spend seven more episodes in this town? Well, too bad, we're spending about seven more minutes in this town. First off, this is the wrong road, sorry. This is the wrong road, sorry. It's this one that we want. Check it out. Huh? You can buy the dessert that everyone in Castilia City is talking about. Are you gonna get in line? The line gets really long, but it's worth lining up. Castilia cones are popular once more after falling out of favor. It's sort of like every fad from your childhood where you get to middle school and everyone's like, oh my God, you play Pokemon? That makes you of a sexual orientation that people used to use as, ugh, it's so stupid. I couldn't believe the crap people would say and use as insults back then. But yeah, um, it's like Pokemon itself. People used to make fun of you for that, but Nowadays, it's gone back into favor because then people got nostalgic for it. There's a rumor the new champion loves our Castelia cones, and suddenly an avalanche of customers are screaming for our ice cream. I'm screaming for joy. Eek! It's the pop super popular Castelia cone. How many do you want? 12 of them, buddy. Thank you for your business. Please come again. There's enough for everyone. The only difference is that you have to wait in line, and you know, you can only get them once a day, so. I guess this makes it suboptimal for speedrunning the 100% category if you were to buy those Castelia cones now versus in the main game. Not that they're even used for that purpose anyway. Next up, we're going on to Mode Street? I hope that's what it's called. We're going all the way to the metal office, but not for any sort of achievements. No, 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 no. We need to be better little boys and girls before we've earned that. Instead, we're going to the third floor. Hi there, trainer. My name is Fennel. I'm researching Pokemon trainers. You're not gonna like whip out a magnifying glass and like look at my armpits, are you? 
the game sync is a vital part of that research. Let me explain the system for collecting trainer save files. Game sync is a system that retrieves the memories of sleeping Pokemon. That's right, we can collect save files from trainers all over the world. What's more, we learned that if you use game sync to make Pokemon fall asleep, it will have dreams. That's then when you wake up Pokemon, the dream becomes a reality in a space called the Enterlink in the middle of the Unova region. Amazing, right? If you like, please send your save file. My assistant can explain the details if you're interested. Please talk to her, not you. Oh, how are the boxes working? Hey, that's right, I have a bunch of Eevee. Would you like to take one for me? Oh, your party is full. <laughs> nah, I think we're fine. Eevee indeed has many potential evolutions. When we take a look at it, this Eevee is always level 10 and ha it's adamant nature, wow. And has the utterly terrible ability anticipation. But maybe it'll turn into a better ability? Vaporeon's hidden ability is hydration, healing status problems in rain. You'd expect me to say that this is good on rain teams, but no. It's a great ability to have on rain teams. Almost no Pokemon can even have this ability, much less one this bulky, and it can use rest for free every time it needs to heal. It's evil to bring down a Vaporeon if it pulls off that strategy. Jolteon with quick feet is a ha, take that when switching into a foe. But Jolteon's so fast anyway that it's a Pokemon getting a speed buff that doesn't even need it. Volt Absorb wasn't great or anything with it being so frail, but I feel like it was at least more appreciated than this. Flareon, now we're talking. I've got a move set to make Flareon just a little less suckish. Guts is one of the best abilities out there. Throw a Toxic Orb on Flareon, which is actually pretty easy to get. Teach it Facade for 140 power and Flame Charge to boost speed. This actually makes it pretty fun. I just said Flareon could be fun. What have I become? Espeon with Magic Bounce. Ah, even better. Magic Bounce is a downright overpowered and factually better synchronize. This works 100% of the time as long as the status move hits Espeon. And Espeon doesn't have to take the status ailment to get the effect. It's awesome. Umbreon with Inner Focus instead of Synchronize, don't you? And last up, a beautiful melody makes people happy, a sad melody makes people sorrowful. That's the power of melodies. There is a one Pokemon that can emit a certain powerful melody that we want to bring here. But you can't get it in 2023, surely? Unless... I don't have the distribution cartridge for this thing. But what I do have is a method that you can use to get events. We're gonna connect to Nintendo Wi-Fi connection using Reconnect24, just as I did in that previous video that we saw. It's doing stuff on my screen. This stuff is wizardry. Searching for a gift. On the way to victory! Start training for the World Championship today. This special meta gross will put your rivals in the dark. This wasn't what I wanted, but I'll certainly take it. Basically, the server will recognize which events you currently have. That's a shiny! And it'll give you a random event that you don't currently have. What is this, Auras? I didn't even know they did a shiny distribution for Metagross back then. Now, you want to know the best part about that? We want to exit the Pokemon Center and go back in. Because that means... <laughs> Lucky Color Medal, because now we've obtained our first shiny Pokemon. There's only one medal for this, so no shiny living decks to complete it. They're not that evil. Barely. Let's get another mystery gift over Nintendo Woofka. I hope that we can get the one that we want within a couple of tries and I'm not just going to get every single possible event before getting the one that I want. The mythical Pokemon Keldeo. Sure, I'll take a second Keldeo, why the heck not? Oh, sorry, I went to go check. This is Ray Rizzo's Metagross. That's why it was mentioning the World Championship. Makes a lot of sense. As an adamant nature, somewhat of a clown. Yeah, this is a good Metagross. And then Keldeo is Calm Nature. I'm willing to bet this one's not fixed in what it gives you. And it's got a PP max just like the other one does, but it's level 50. 
Attempt number three. A shiny Palkia for you. I'm gonna cancel receiving that one. Because as it turns out, I have the distribution cards for that event. Humble brag. Blast away the competition. Use this cloister. <laughs> I'll take it. Cloister's a Pokemon I actually wanted to use for something coming up, and this saves me the trouble of looking for it. Battle in Vancouver. The special Smeargle is a... Sure. I remember when Smeargle was the cream of the crop in competitive, and then they banned Dark Void, making it so it could only be used by Darkrai, and it was still pretty decent. Drain your opponents with this Ludicolo. <laughs> He looks horrified. A super fast Mewtwo for you. Two. This is my ninth attempt at this. It's Deoxys! Enjoy this special Deoxys that mo knows moves it cannot normally learn! I've learned that events can repeat. It's given me the Ludicolo and the Metagross a couple of times now, and you just gotta get lucky to get the one that you want. I just got Keldeo twice before getting this Pokemon once. A shiny Dialga. Shiny Giratina. The mythical Pokemon Meloetta is not a myth! Ugh, this took me 35 tries to get the one I wanted. Your cry is like, ah, isn't it? That sounds like Kirby from Melee. Yeah, it does sound like Kirby from Melee. I've been waiting to do this again. The scent you brought me reminded me of a long-ago melody from the fringes of my sepia-toned memories. It was a song my mother loved. It made me feel so nostalgic. Would you like to hear the melody? Oh, he didn't say the thing. I was gonna... Meloetta remembered the Relic Song it had forgotten. Meloetta is trying to learn Relic Song, but Meloetta can't learn more than four moves. Getting rid of round? <laughs> Screw that crap. Oh my god, he says it! My mother once told me of a Pokemon that played a melody and danced so lightly that it filled people's hearts with joy then the sorrow darkened the entire world and the Pokemon's melody was lost at the same time somewhere some red shoes were lost. When you came through the door, I remembered the melody, and that Pokemon had forgotten how to dance, began to step lightly. Once more, you are my inspiration, you are a mysterious child. <laughs> I remembered that line, and I was waiting for him to say it, and then he didn't, and then he did. Meloetta. So, we got a pretty great Psychic type. Has all the expected moves. Psychic and Shadow Ball are accounted for. Calm Mind, a few coverage moves. Everything's here. Like a lot of Psychics, some special defense is there too. It's elevated by just how high those stats are and a normal subtyping, so Ghost can't bring her down. 
Everything changes when we get to Relic Song, a 70 power normal type signature move with a 10% chance to also put the opponent to sleep. And Meloetta transforms into a completely different Pokemon with a normal and fighting type. Meloetta Pirouette form was the original Terra type. As of the time of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, Meloetta was the fastest fighting type Pokemon ever discovered. It can unleash a flurry of physical attacks like close combat. But what's disappointing is that it has to have the move Relic Song taking up space in the first place in order to transform. And thus, it only gets three remaining move slots for a potential mixed move set in order to take advantage of both of those forms. Unless it has a chance to use Relic Song to blow something over that sustain heavy damage, it sorta of kills the momentum that it doesn't get a lot of options in either form individually. Meloman is also a little on the mid side of speed, unless it unlocks the Pirouette form, and it might very well get smacked around trying to transform before it gets to. If it can pull it off, it's a super interesting Pokemon with loads of potential. It's just a matter of if it can. Meloetta can never be shiny under any circumstances whatsoever. Here's what it would look like if shiny Meloetta were possible. I gotta say, I like it a lot. I feel like it's sort of a reference to Hatsune Miku. And it's a shame because they did a crossover with Hatsune Miku recently and they didn't make this available. Oh, hi. Thanks to you and Meloetta, memories of my birthplace, memories of when I was little, memories of singing together after fi finished gathering berries. All these memories came flooding back. The Funfest mission Berry Hunting Adventure has been added to the interlink. Nice obscure little bonus unlock that you get for getting Meloetta. Another reason to go for that distribution. Now that song that Meloetta was dancing to, that is the relic song itself. Did it sound a little familiar? That's right, it's Flockacy Town's theme. It's kind of odd that this connection exists, given that Flockacy Town was really more Keldeo's town than Meloetta's, so it relates to a mythical Pokemon, just not the right one. That's four towns down, a mythical Pokemon, all sorts of obscure stuff for you. Nice complete package. Next time on Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, we continue our foray through the post game and go north of Castelia City, starting around the ring. See you guys then.